YouTube. We got another little project to knock out this time. We gotta build a scrognet for the flower room because these girls, the tiger biscuits that are in the bedroom here are almost ready to move over into the flower room. They just have a little bit more time. I'm gonna veg them out a little bit longer, but they are just about ready to go over to the flower room. And that means we need to get it ready. So we do have a few projects to knock out in here, but I think what I wanna tackle this time is the scrognet. I have some ideas for how I wanna take care of that. I have some materials laying around. I have a couple of things that I think we can work with. So why don't we take a look in the flower room, see what we got going on and what we got to build, and we'll go from there. All right, so this is a project that I wanted to tackle for quite some time. We're here in the flower room and I need to set up a scrog net. Um, I like to scrog my plants out, um, especially in a space this small, it's gonna be really effective for us to fill the area that we have as much as possible. So a scrog net is going to be really, really effective in this situation. And um, no, for reference, literally no one calls it scrooging. Uh, just wanted to throw that out there. So the best thing for me to do that I could think of, because I like to reuse things and I tend to hang on to things, side effect of being a fabricator, I have all the tent poles from my old tent. So you'll notice I've got, I reuse the door to the tent as the door to my flower room. I reused part of the tent as the door to the bedroom as well. And I also reused the rest of the walls and the floor for the walls and the ceiling in there. So to make use of those poles, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to build a dual level scrog net. So I want the first level that I can grow the plant up into, stretch it out, maximize my area switch to flower and then when the plant stretches up I'll have a second level for that to grow into so that it stays stable they don't flop over when the colas get heavy because they hopefully will get heavy so the plan is we're gonna have to cut up these poles re-weld them finally gonna get to use that terrible harbor freight welder and then we will get everything assembled we'll have to weave our own net and then we'll have to bring it in here and get it installed then the next step we can move on to is worrying about drainage for the plants here but for now, why don't we run out into the shop? We'll get to work on the frame itself. Okay, so now that we've got our tube cut down and both edges prepped, we can go ahead and clamp it together and we'll throw a good tack on here to make sure it's nice and secure. And then we'll go ahead and flip it over and then we'll throw a nice tack on this side as well, just to make sure nothing shifts. And then what we're gonna do, because this material is so thin, we're gonna go ahead and do the Chinese TikTok welding tactic. We're gonna throw a bunch of small tacks all the way around this thing so that we don't blow a big hole in it. It's gonna be plenty strong, not exactly ideal, but it'll definitely work for the situation.
Okay, so with all of our tubes cut to length and re-welded, we can go ahead and mark for our holes. Now I'm gonna be drilling through holes uh, through these tubes instead of using eyelets or something like that. It's just gonna be much easier. And I like to do two inch squares for my sprog nets. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark every two inches. Then we'll come back in with a center punch, and punch each hole, drill it, give it a nice countersink to hopefully prevent any fraying of the rope. And that will be basically it for the fabrication portion of this project. Okay, we're back, it's the next day. I got a coat of paint on everything. We finished it all up, got it all cleaned up, sanded, put a little bit of a chamfer, let's see if it'll focus. Put a little bit of a chamfer on some of these holes just to hopefully keep the string from getting cut. But as you can see, we got a nice little coat of paint on everything. Not perfect, doesn't have to be. I just kind of wanted to keep the rust off of all the pieces, but exposed steel in a high humidity environment. That's a recipe for disaster. Uh, so we just went ahead and sprayed a quick gloss black over everything. Now we got to take our string. I always like to use this pink contractor twine because it's cheap and it doesn't produce uh, little fibers that will get into your product. So we got to assemble our frames and then we have to weave the netting. I like this stuff. You can pull it real tight. It's real strong. It doesn't flex like that weak stuff you get from the grow store. And this is going to be a custom application that's going to fit our grow space exactly. When we get it assembled in the flower room, you'll see what I mean by that. It's going to be a perfect fit and I think it's gonna work out really well for our environment. So let's go ahead and get this assembled and we'll get the net weaved in there and then we'll get it in the flower room. Okay, so now that we have the frame fabbed up, the net's all woven and everything's painted and completed, let's go ahead and get it in here. We can get the legs on the first level and you can see what I mean by maximizing the space in here. It's gonna be excellent. Really, really, really gonna be an excellent use of space in here. So let's get the net in here, get the first level up, and then we'll get the second level on. Okay, so with this thing assembled and in here, I think you get a much better picture of what I mean by maximizing our space. I mean, we are using all the available space in here and I want to make sure that we can. So this first level, I know you might be thinking, looks a little bit close to the light. To give you a sense of scale in here, this first level is about 18 inches from the light. The second level should be about 12 inches from the light and that is a little bit close, but I'm thinking that with the top, the top colos grow up into that one, I'll be happy. If we get most of our branches up into here, I'll be happy. Now, I may decide that I want to shorten these legs a little bit. I might want to do that. I'm not sure. Once we get our plants in here and we see how everything looks, I'll decide from there. Uh, but for now, I wanted to make sure that we at least had enough height to get our plants in under here let them grow up into this first level and see how we do. Now, getting the second level in here, like I said, it'd be another about six inches up. 
and that'll give us a little more stabilization for those heavier colas. But I am very, very happy with the fit of this. So let's go ahead and get that second level in here. We'll get to work. So as you may or may not have noticed by watching me struggle with this thing, it is not easy to fit in here. Uh, it does take up all the space. And that was the plan, so I'm very happy with that, but I'm very glad that I also got this in here before I tried to get the plants in here because I would not have been able to do it otherwise. Um, I'm really happy with how this came out, actually. This is a perfect use of materials. I'm glad that I put this stuff to use. It was sort of just sitting around um, being wasted. And it ended up being exactly what I needed. This is a perfect use of space. Barely takes up any room at all. Shouldn't uh, incur too much on me taking care of the plants in here. But also once they grow up into this area, they will have a lot of stability. Now it remains to be seen how difficult it's gonna to be to get back in here to do leaf strip and things once these plants get a little bit bigger. We'll, we'll see, we'll see, it might be very difficult. But uh, for now, I'm very happy. So that pretty much wraps it up for this project. Next, we were going to have to deal with the drainage. Now this is a carpet and there's nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. So we're gonna to have to figure out drainage at least under the rack here because there probably will be one, maybe two plants in here at a time, maybe three but probably never more than that. So under the rack here, if we can get some sort of drainage that'll bring our runoff to the front so that I can deal with it in some sort of storage bucket or something, I gotta figure that out. But that is the next project. For now, we're pretty much wrapped up and uh, we can move on to the next thing. Okay, so looking at my situation a little bit more, considering the height of these five gallon pots, which I normally use, the height that my plants are at currently, the power of this light, I decided to cut another six inches out of the legs and bring this down. And looking at it now, this is gonna be much, much better. I really like this height. I really like the distance to the light. I think that this is gonna be a much better situation overall. So now what we have is about 16 inches between this rack and this bottom trellis here uh, that's perfect that's going to squish the plants just a little bit as they are now which is perfect because that means as they get bigger they will only grow farther out along this trellis and then when we flip to flower they will stretch up into this second level and that's exactly what i want so i think this is going to be just perfect and i'm really 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 happy with how this came out so that is really it for me now we will catch you on the next one thanks for stopping by guys